All right, Shabbat Shalom. Can everybody hear me okay? Mr. Nate, I'm going to just wait a few minutes to see if everybody can hear me. All right, Shabbat Shalom. Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry. All right, I'm going to just wait. We're using a different system, so I'm going to wait about a few more minutes to make sure, Mr. Nate, I don't know if you can hear me. Okay. All right, I want to say Shabbat Shalom. I'm going to wait a few more minutes. Um, there was an issue with the setup, so we are streaming from our Bayfell Temple in Dominican. So we kind of shared the um, we kind of shared the link over to our Facebook page. We're also streaming on Twitter as well as as YouTube. So uh, just want to kind of give everybody a few more minutes. I know normally people will go through um, our live button to look at the videos, to look at our classes today. Minister Nate, can you give me? All right. Everybody can hear okay? You know, we're trying to do something fancy. So we're trying to do something a little different. We're using a different system. So I knew we were going to kind of, I gave you guys forewarning last week that we were um, going to a new platform. So you're going to see some new things. You may see some a bunch of hiccups today. So, but you know, sometimes you got to just jump into the fire and go ahead and do it. So we're going to give everybody about a couple of more minutes just because um, it may take folks a little bit of time uh, to find us. Uh, if you can. In the regular Sabbath class chat. So we're going to put a message in the Sabbath class chat that this week, um, if you guys can't find us, uh, on our Bethel Temple and College page that you can go to Bethel Temple, Dominican Republic. I've been warning you all for the longest to follow me on Twitter. So you can go to Mr. Uh, Minister Al at restoration.mag on Twitter. And uh, we should be streaming live on our YouTube page. Of course, I didn't verify it today. So, but we want to welcome everybody to our class. I'm going to just kind of go ahead and, and get started a little bit as Minister Nate is putting uh, the information into um uh, the chat. Mr. Nate, you can also put the YouTube uh, link as well to our YouTube page. So we'll say Shabbat Shalom and, and welcome. Uh, this is our second week on this lesson about praying, um, how to pray the right way. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but I want to welcome those that are joining us from Bayfield Temple here in college in Chicago. Uh, those that may be joining us uh, for from Nashville, Tennessee, say Shabbat Shalom to you, to those in uh, Coral Springs, Florida, say Shabbat Shalom to our evangelists in the, the Dominican Republic and to those uh, pastors in East and West Africa. We want to say Shabbat Shalom to you. We want to say Shabbat Shalom to all of our members that are throughout the United States and around the world. We want to um, welcome you. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And then to our visitors that are visiting us uh, via our, our various streams, uh, we are not streaming via our website. We have to kind of figure that piece out. Um, but you have three different places now that you can uh, view us and make sure that if we have any issues on any of our one system, we have these classes recorded on, on other systems. So we want to welcome you again today uh, on this class. This is the second week um, we talked last week about praying and, and prerequisites. And we're going to talk a little bit, uh, do a little bit of summary, Mr. Nate, from last week about praying, but we want to address the issue how to pray the right way. Um, there are people that will get upset by that statement, the, how to pray the, the right way. There's no right way, Minister Al. Praying is uh, just talking to the Father, um, having a personal relationship with him, and uh, the father, we're going to talk about, Mr. Nate, he has these standards. He has a way in which he wants us to communicate with him. And we're going to see what the Bible says. Now, I'm going to repeat this title again, how to pray the right way. That means that there's a way that is not um, as effective, if you will, uh, to communicate with him. And there's a way that you can pray that at some point, he will stop hearing your prayers. He will stop accepting your requests. Now, I know that may seem harsh, and there are a lot of people 
around the world that will say, absolutely not, Minister Al. I, I 100% disagree with you. But as we say all the time, let God's word be true and let every man be a liar. So we're going to see what is it that God's word says. Now, if people dispute and disagree with, with God's word. Well, you know, you will have a chance to take that up with him on judgment day. Um, he has set up men and women on this earth, as he has always done, that will communicate his message and express his desires. And so we're going to talk a little bit uh, about that um, today. Uh, we're going to, again, review a, a couple of the prerequisites, some things that we spoke about um, last uh, I'm say this is only four pages. Uh, some things that we talked about on last week. And then we're going to move forward and, and we're going to talk about some things that we must include uh, in our faith, in our prayer, so that uh, God can be receptive of what we are requesting from him. All right. So I think we got everything OK. I want to thank everybody again for being patient with us. Uh, Minister, I may be all over the place, so you may see me kind of fumbling and looking around a lot of different places, but we're going to get through it today. Um, Minister Nate, you want to go ahead and jump in and, and, and give a little uh, intake about this lesson on prayer, and then we'll go ahead and get into the lesson. All right, Minister Nate's getting himself together. Okay. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, Saints. Um, I think anytime we talk about prayer um, and we understand that God is a spirit, right? And the Bible says them that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And I think one thing that we have to understand when we pray is that like Mother a man used to say, I'm not going to walk up to heaven, but you get into the spirit through your mind, right? And so uh, there are certain principles that we have to use and that we have to understand that when we're communicating with the father, there's a certain way you communicate with the father, right? Um, if you are trying to communicate uh, in the spirit, with the father you don't want distractions around minister Al. Uh, you don't want your phone on uh you want the people that might be in your house or around you to know that you are in a private area and you are taking time away from whatever they feel is important right now so that you might communicate uh with the father and to the father now uh mashika said it like this when you pray, go into your closet, right? And so there should be a designated area, Minister Al, uh, that you have in your home where you can communicate with the Father uh, so that there are no distractions because you're communicating in spirit to the Father who is a spirit, to God who is a spirit. And so we have to understand a lot of things that are spiritual and that are necessary so that when we communicate with the father, there is absolutely nothing here on earth that we are allowing to block our communication. Uh, the Bible talks about something called to pray without ceasing minister. Al. And mother, I may uh, speak on this a lot. And she would say, you don't want any distractions minister. Al. Right. What happens, Minister Al, when you go to read your Bible? You got everybody calling you. You got all these thoughts coming up in your mind, Minister Al, of things that you should have did already or things that you have to do later on today. And so when we go to pray, Minister Al, and I'll turn it back over to you, uh, one of the most important things is that we clear our mind. And one way that we do that, Minister Al, to where we clear our mind from all of these things that might cloud us and block our ability to communicate one-on-one -on -one or directly with the Father is that we normally sing songs, Minister Al. We normally sing songs of praise to the Father so that we can clear out anything that might be in our mind or on our mind 
so that we can have our direct connection, Minister Al, to the Father. And so it's extremely important to understand that uh, the Father is a spirit, right? And when you communicate with him, you have to communicate with him in spirit and in truth. So not just mentally, Minister Al, but you have to use the principles and the teachings of truth that we have received from him on how to communicate with him. And so uh, I think that's something for us to keep in mind as we go through this lesson, Minister Al, that it's not just about getting a message across to the Father. It's about being precise and using the principles of truth that he's given us to get the message of truth, I mean, to get the uh, message across to the Father based off of truth, what he said he would do for you, what he said he desired. You know, the Bible says that, uh, Minister, I think it slipped my mind, but oh, the Bible says that he inhabits the praises of Yisrael. He loves your praise. So if you're going to try to communicate with him or connect with him, how about you start off, Minister, Al, by trying to praise him and connect with him and what he thinks is important so that you can get the message across to him clear. And when he speaks back, you can hear the message clear whenever he decides to speak back to you, Minister. Al. All right. Thanks, Minister Nathan. We're going to, again, talk about uh, some of the things. And I want to continue to emphasize throughout this class that the world will disagree with a lot of what we're going to talk about today. and. You really, I mean, you don't have a right to disagree when we're using Bible verses to show what it is that the Father desires. People say, well, that's Old Testament stuff, right? So we're going to show throughout the Bible um, some requirements that he has for us. Listen, we all have been, and you know, I'm the king of talking about relationships. We all have been in relationships. We know that the way you may communicate in one relationship or when you talk to one person, it's not the same way that you communicate when you talk to someone else. Like you can't bring that same weak game, you know, if you're a man to certain women. You you got to understand something about them. You you sit and trying to figure them out. And and what are the things that they they like? What are some things that are a turn off to them? And we all are like that. Even at our jobs, we're the same way. You know, if, if people are, are talking to us, kind of talking down, condescending. There are some people who can deal with that. And so the father has a particular way in which he wants us to talk to him. Like, stop taking the Bible missionary out of context. When he says, come as you are, don't come out. You know, you can't come to the temple or come to the church, anybody place with just your bra on and, and some daisy dukes because you say it's hot outside. Right. We got to read these things within context. And so. We're going to look forward here and I'm going to continue to press and push these Bible verses. Because people are in their own. Um, they've interpreted the Bible in their own way. And they have their own desires of how they want to worship him. And, and, and in the words of Minister Nate and in the words of what the Bible says, when you go before judgment. And he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Then you will understand why. When you deny what the prophet said, and when you deny what the scriptures said, you're not denying me because I'm saying it in the 21st century. I mentioned Nate. You're, de you're, you're uh, denying the father. So I don't take it personal. I try to be as clear, as concise, and use the scriptures to prove all things. because. Your salvation is dependent on the things that you hear and the things that you receive. Amen. So let's go ahead, Minister Nate. And um, you want it on the side or at the bottom? You want it at the side or the bottom? Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to share our screen. Excuse me again today for being a little slow. <laughs> all right. I think we all should be able to see it now. How to pray the right way. I'm going to wait and make sure that comes up. Did it come up yet, Minister Nate? No? No? All right, here it is. There we go. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. All right. So everybody should be good now, right? We got a lot of different words here, but let's focus on the bottom here in the middle, how to pray the right way. We're going to talk a little bit, Minister Nate, it just spend a few minutes um, talking about some prerequisites, bringing up some things that we talked about on last week. All right. Oh, yeah, there are prerequisites. And we're going to establish through the scriptures. Now, some of the things that we, we're going to talk about, Minister Nate, and some of the things I'm going to say, I understand that if you're visiting, if you're listening to this for the first time, it may not make sense to you. Yeah, that's fine. It may not make sense to you. Because you don't understand who Israel is or when we talk about Yisrael. But when we see a Bible verse and it commands us to pray a certain way, if there are things within there that we don't understand, then you need to send us a message. You need to say, can you give me more information? I need to understand it on that. Throughout the Bible, we are given prerequisites by the Father, by the prophets, and others for getting our prayers answered. So the Bible doesn't just have to say, thus says the Lord, pray this way. We have to look at what the prophets say. We have to look at what other inspired men and women of the Bible say. We have to look at what the apostles said, what Christ said. We talked about in last week in 2 Chronicles, the seventh chapter, verse 14. It starts to lay out the order that we must follow in order to get our prayers through to the Father and receive a favorable response. Now, I want to say this. There's a way that we can pray and receive a favorable response all the time. Many people, however, are tricked into believing that the Father is answering their prayers all the time. While it is the Father that answers prayers, people should not take the, this gift or blessing as a sign that they are living a righteous life. So there are people who may pray incorrectly, but they have great work ethic. They may not pray at all, but they got enough common sense to go and get a degree or a trade that's in demand. And so when things start going your way, well, you can do the basic things in life and things can go well with you for a while. And so the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter, talks often about Satan deceiving the entire world. When you are praying in the name of Michael or Yeshua or whatever, if you pray in the wrong way, but you went and got a degree in accounting, or in, in um, cybersecurity, or you wouldn't got a medical degree. You creating your own wealth, independent of the Bible and God. So one of the biggest things, and, and I, I talked about this last week, Mr. Nate, is sitting people down and getting them to put their nose in the book. What does the book say? Don't trick yourself into believing that things are okay with you. Your relationship with God is great because things are going well. This is why it's important to know the Bible for yourself so that you can judge your own heart by the word of God. You know, I think that's a great thing, Minister Nate, to judge your own heart. But how do I judge my heart? Because, see, people believe and say all types of things. Oh, we're going to get into this tides thing in a, in a week or two, but... People believe, as we talked about a few weeks, Mr. Nate, according to your perception, according to your environment, that shapes your truth. But your truth is based off of what's in your heart. And what's in your heart should be compared to what's in the Bible. Now, if what's in the Bible contradicts what's in your heart, guess which one is wrong? It's not the Bible. So, we have to compel men. We have to show them what the scripture says. Now, let's go into a couple of these Bible verses, Minister Nate. We talked about last week. Second Chronicles 7, 14, very critical Bible verse. Now, I'm going to address an issue on the next slide after I read this Bible verse because 
Second Chronicles is probably one of the first Bible verse. Well, it might not be the first one, but it's up there in the top three, Minister Nate, on teaching us how we are effectively praying to the Father. If is a condition, my people which are called by my name. Oh, yeah, we call Christians or we call Jehovah's Witness or whatever the case. No, that is not the name that this scripture is talking about. We talk about putting the Bible verse to, verses together, man, it's name, making them make sense. When we take all the Bible verses and we put them together, we come out with a solid conclusion. So you have to be his people. You have to be called by his name. Now, the question should be, what name is that? Shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Do you know that your way is wicked if you are not called by his name? Now, I mean, there's a little wiggle room because my way was wicked. When you are ignorant to the knowledge that God wants us to have, you know we're living in ignorance. And that ignorance is causing us to be wicked. When you don't remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, because your grandmama never told you that, it doesn't make her a bad person. Don't make you a bad person because you've never heard it. But it is still a requirement of the Father. Oh, folks didn't know, Mr. Nate, that you're supposed to come out when you are conscious that you are supposed to seek salvation. That's not what Christianity tells us. So when you go against the will of God, you know, as harsh as it may sound, it's wicked. And God doesn't like that. But he says, you turn from your wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. So there is a blockage in the communication. Because he says, then will I hear from heaven? Well, what comes before then? You got to be his people called by his name. I talk to a lot of people I love. They are not humble or God has blocked them because they, they they can't understand certain principles, basic principles of the Bible and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. These are prerequisites. Oh, I know what some people are thinking. I'm going to get to that. God is, is hearing my prayers and I don't know what name you're talking about. But I'm convinced, I'm 100% convinced that God is hearing my prayers. So I don't believe in that Old Testament Bible verse, but I'll deal with that here in a minute. And then I think the last verse we have, Mr. Nate, we may have one more. No, that's the last one. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doth his will, him he heareth. You have to do his will. That means that you have to pray in the way he tells you to pray. You know, his will is for those that love him to come into the family and be called by his name. Do you know if you don't do that, that the Bible considers you a sinner and you are not his people? But he says that if you are a worshiper of God, we have a huge job to do. That's why I can't do this. Beating myself on the chest. You can't go out and do this being arrogant. You can't go out and do this and be condescending. It's not about you. It's not about exalting yourself. Yourself, I'm sorry. But it's about us being able to effectively communicate to the world so that they no longer become sinners. The first step is come on out of Babylon. Come out of religion. Come out of falsehood and become his people which are called by his name because if you're not you are blocking the communication line oh there are some things that slip through oh i got you i know what you're thinking i got you i'm gonna deal with that but mr nate here are two great bible verses and it's hard for people to accept and understand that god doesn't change said, God is not a, a man that he, he don't lie. And he changes not. So if we were given this as a command, whether you call it the Old Testament or New Testament, it's still a command. It's not no old covenant just because it's in the Old Testament. 
He is the same God that they served in the Old Testament. Minister, Al, can you pull up Ecclesiastes 5 and 2 for me? Um, and if you can put that in over there, brother, because I'll you want to put it, you want me to put it in uh you could put it on the let the, me see if I can let me see if I can uh, Dominican. You know, where we at Ecclesiastics. Uh five and two. Five and who? Two. Five and two. All right. Um it's easy to read on you, King James. Surprise me, Minister Al. I'll, I'll give you the King James. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, when we talk about Minister Al being humble, you know. The Bible talks about humbling yourself as a little child. You know, children don't mind asking for help because they don't know. But, you know, as adults, we feel we know, if not everything, a lot. And so there's no reason for me to go ask for help because what might this person know that I don't already know? Or what might this person know that I can't find the answer to on my own? So we don't necessarily want to be subjected to someone else's wisdom or understanding or experience in certain areas and then there's a part of us that says um, that i just don't want to deal with other people as it pertains to receiving help from them and so we we choose not to humble ourselves but you know minister Al, when we're talking about god the creator of the universe it's extremely important that we understand we don't have the answers you know we talk about this bible verse i believe in deuteronomy where it says what nation what nation is so near unto god in all that we ask for so part of being humble minister Al, is understanding that you don't have all the answers if i understand i don't have all the answers and I understand that God is the creator of the universe. And I understand that his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is unlimited. Minister Al, I understand why being humble is a prerequisite to getting my prayers answered. Right? And then it's necessary to understand where you are. You know, we talked about this last night, Mr. Al. It's all right for you to be honest with yourself and say, I struggle in this area of my life. I struggle in that area of my life. And so I need you, Father, to help me to overcome. But if you have this belief in your mind that came from your own wisdom that I can be a sinner, Minister Al, a full-fledged sinner, and God is obligated to respond to me, to hear my prayer and respond to me, are you deceiving yourself? And so when we use the Bible verse earlier, minister, where it says that God is a spirit and they that worship him must, it's mandatory, minister, worship him in spirit and in truth. And the spirit part, you know, people can worship him in spirit. They use their mind. You know, but truth is the problem because truth is the standard by which, Minister Al, God has designed for you to worship him. Not your standard, Minister Al. Not my standard. You know, not my mother and father's standard. Not my grandparents' standard. Not the culture that I came through that didn't come from God. But it's God's standard by which we will be able to worship him properly. And in Ecclesiastes 5 and 2, Minister Al, it says, be not rash. And you can put it in New Living Translation as well, Minister Al. It says, be not rash with thy mouth. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before Elohim, before God. For Elohim is in heaven. God's in heaven, minister. And thou upon earth, therefore let thy words be few. Now, uh, let me read in the New Living Translation, 
Minister Al. It says, do not hurry to speak or be in a hurry as you think what to tell God. For God is in heaven and you are on the earth, so let your words be few. I mean, so I don't just utter anything before God. Don't be quick with the lips and say anything before him. Because you wouldn't do that if you were talking to the mayor of Chicago. Now, you say all these things online, Minister, but if you're standing before the mayor, and you're standing before all the people that's around the mayor, you be very careful on what you're going to say. If you're standing before the governor, I don't care how you feel about Prisker, I don't care what state you live in, you can talk all that stuff online in the privacy of your home, but if you're standing before the governor, whatever state you're from, and you have all these important people around him, you're going to be very careful on what you say to him. I don't care how you feel about the president of the United States or the president of any country. When you're standing before them, Minister, and you're trying to communicate certain things to them, you're going to be very careful on what you say. Now, if you give that honor and respect, Minister Al, to your parents, the different leaders in your community, your professors, the, your boss at your job, the mayor, the governor, the president of the United States, how much more should you consider this when you're talking to the creator of the universe? And so if the standard in which your communication is based off of is not the truth that was given to us from the Bible, Minister, you've already lost. Right? You've already lost. You can't come to the president of the United States speaking slain and expect him to expect him to respond to you in a favorable way. And so how much more could you come to the father? not understanding what's available to you, not understanding the way he expects you to communicate with him, and then expect him to do certain things for you. This is why, and we'll go over it, Minister Al, the apostles asked a great question to Christ. They said, teach us how to pray. Oh, now, the prophet has been praying for years. Their forefathers have been praying for years. But you have insight about prayer that we need that can get our answers, our, our prayers answered, Minister Al, on a higher level than what we're already doing. Therefore, we need your insight on how should we speak to the Father so that we might have effective prayer, so that he might receive our message effectively. And he might respond back to us effectively. And so being humble, Minister Al, is extremely important to getting your uh, request to the Father and he opening his ears and the Father responding back to you and your lifestyle, Minister Al. You can't be no sinner and expect him to speak to you. And so your lifestyle is extremely important as well to the Father looking upon you in a favorable way hearing your prayer and responding to you in a favorable way, Minister. We should pray. Now, when we're young, you know, you see kids get out on their knees and it's kind of funny how we do it. And we're taught to do that when we're young. But prayer is, is pretty much a discretional thing. Like people say, I can pray in my car. I can pray wherever I'm at. Like, it's something that's not part of our daily living. People don't think that it should be part of their daily living, that God requires us to speak with him. Isn't that something? Listen, we get lost in the shuffle. We get lost in a lot of things, Mr. Nate, that we do throughout the day. And so um, he wants to have a relationship with us. And if he didn't tell you to pray, we're going to go into this three times a day. If he didn't tell you how to pray or how many times to pray, we'll do just like we do when we go to the gym. Oh, we feel real good and go to the gym for six days in a row. And then we won't go there for another two years. Right. 
every now and then we feel like we'll get out and walk around the street to get on our treadmill or something like that. But, you know, he's putting us in a position where we are developing this relationship that he's becoming our father. You know that Jacob didn't always belong to the father. When he was running from his brothers, when it's Nate, he said that if you would give me food and remnant, if you would give me these things to protect me along the way, what did he say, Mr. Nate, then? Shall you be my God? Will Jehovah be my God? So when he was running, you know, Jacob wasn't saved. He wasn't saved. And so it's the same thing. God wants us to do just like you did with your buddies. Go bowling with your buddies, watch the game. But you, yeah, you're watching the game and doing certain things, but you're building a relationship. You're getting closer. You're getting to know one another. In our relationships, you're communicating. You're getting to know one another. But, Minister Nate, we're going to go to um, something that the true saints, the true people of God should do, that we're never taught. And this is what Satan has done. He's separated man from the real true word of God for so many years. So when Minister Al or Minister Nate says it, when we have a class on it, people are going to look down and frown upon us and say, well, you don't need to do all that. And then, you know, for those that got ears to hear, let them hear. For those that say, I don't have to do that, that's between you and God. Minister Nate, let's look at um, our prayer, our prayer life, and, and some of the things that we see from righteous men um, during, the biblical during biblical times. Why should the true saints pray three times a day? Are we good? No. Okay. Why should the true saints pray three times a day on their knees? Do you know that the Bible commands us? It shows us that we must pray three times a day on our knees facing the east, facing Jerusalem. Now we have to prove that. There are a lot of people that accept that. Where do you think that the Muslims got it from? Now they pray five times. I think what they face Mecca or something like that. Where do you think that came from? But when we get into this modern world, we kind of get mixed up in Christianity, things like that. They kind of say, you don't need to do all that. The first person we have recorded in the Bible to pray, Mr. Nay, three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening, was David, who was an expert in getting his prayers answered. He must have prayed on his knees because David taught that prayers should be done on the knees to show reverence or respect to the Father, helping our prayers to be answered according to Psalms 95th chapter, verse 6. This is what David is saying. Now, I got something for you in a minute. For those people that still say, well, that's the Old Testament. But it's David. And there's something that we should know about David. David also prayed toward the temple, according to Psalms 5 and 7, because the help of the Yehoah came from the east of the temple or sanctuary. Now, we know that his presence, you know, the Bible talks about his dwelling presence in the book of Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter, I believe, in verses 3 through, through 6, mentioned 8. And we see a lot of other places. David talked about him in Psalms, the 27th chapter. But do you know that your help comes from the east? Now, this is kind of interesting, Mr. Nate. I kind of bring this up sometimes in, in having conversations with people. Some of you may have known this, and I may have said this in this class before. People of, I don't want to say ancient times, let's just say 200 years ago or 600 years ago. They understood that the help of the Yehoah comes from the east. If you look at most cemeteries, they bury people with their feet facing the east. So you see the headstones, you'll see the headstones in most cemeteries, but the way the headstones are set up, it's set up so that they can bury you so that if you were to rise up, well, you guys can't see me, but if you were to rise up, then you're facing the east. 
when Christ comes back, the Bible talks about the graves. Oh, you're going to rise up. Now, you're not going to rise up in these bodies, but you're going to go towards the east because that's where you're held. Now, you can investigate it. You can look on on Google or whatever. But people many years ago, Minister Nate, I'm not talking about, you know, 60 years, but 400 years ago and 1,000 years ago, they understood that help came from the east. So just a little tidbit, you know, so that you will know. But we're going to see something interesting about David, Minister Nate, in, in just a second here. But in the book of Psalm, the 95th chapter, verse 6, and I, I gave you this Bible verse here during the reading. It says, oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Ahoa, the Lord, our maker. Right. So we, we bow down in reverence. These people were inspired. They were prophets. They were leaders. They were kings. And they were inspired to give us instructions. Now, we let people come along many years later and say, we don't have to do that. As long as you pray, you fine. OK. This I'm not going to argue with nothing you say. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. And. Often I say if the if the. If it's hid, if God's wisdom is hid, if the truth is hid, it's hid to them who are lost. Let's look at our next Bible verse, Minister Nate. In the book of Psalms, the 55th chapter, verse 17. Evening and morning and at noon. Will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice? Oh, I'm going to get to David. I'm going to get to these Old Testament folks. Folks say that's in the Old Testament. But he didn't say four times a day. Now, if you want to pray six times a day, more power to you. But he said three times in the evening, the morning and at noon. He said, I won't pray. You want to get your. Prayers heard. Let's go back to the beginning. Learn, learn, become his people, call by his name. Now, I get it. We all do all that we know how to do, but everybody is going to hear. Everybody's going to get the opportunity. Now, some people may not hear this lesson. But so what? You rejected the Sabbath day or you rejected his feast days or you rejected the dietary law or you rejected the law of Moses. So so what if you don't hear this on prayer? But somebody's going to hear this lesson. Somebody's going to hear how to effectively communicate, how to get your prayers answered all the time. And when you get an opportunity on Judgment Day, when you get an opportunity to see our maker face to face. While I prayed, God, and I asked you to help me. Did you pray evening, morning and noon? See, he has a standard and requirement. And, and one of the things, Mr. Nate, I'm going to continue to emphasize, and, and I'm jumping a little bit ahead of myself here, is that if he wants you to do it three times a day so that he shall hear your voice and you do it once a week, then what's the purpose of Minister Al doing it three times a day? I want to be lazy like you. It's a simple task. Why would he give the person the same benefit that never prays or just pray while they drinking they uh what was that you was drinking Minister Nate at Starbucks? That Susie Q Crunch, Mocha Lotta, whatever. You know, you driving your car, you're like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. It's a beautiful day. Thank you, Lord, for my drink. Why should you benefit? And I'm doing what he told me to do. Lastly. Psalms, the 20th chapter, verse two, send the help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. So help is coming out of the east. Well, Mr. Al, the temple isn't there. Guess what? That same latitude and longitude that exists where Jerusalem is at is the same latitude and longitude where New Jerusalem, New Jerusalem is going to be. I'm not praying towards the east. 
them not the real Jews. Got nothing to do with those folks. The new Jerusalem, the new heaven and the new earth, new Jerusalem is going to have the same latitude and longitude in its name. We still are commanded to pray towards the east from where our help comes from. You know, first of all, Minister, I'm a Dunkin' Donuts type of guy. You know, my I, my wife, I was, we was already there, and that's why I got that. You know, oh, okay, that's that, what you uh, gonna stick with, brother. Cinnamon crunch, <laughs> whatever, whatever it's called, Minister. Al. Um, but you know, I I want to read uh, about six verses, maybe seven verses from uh, First Kings to kind of give more clarity to this, Minister. Al. Now, David prayed three times a day, Minister. Al. And you know who else prayed three times a day? Okay, well, I'll leave that alone. Yes. Well, let me read this in 1 Kings 8 and 28 to verse 30 and then verses 46 to 48. Because uh, we don't want people to say, hey, what strange stuff do they have going on where they're saying pray towards this way, pray in this direction. That sounds strange. That sounds weird. So I want to show you where that comes from, Minister Isle. Um, in first Kings, uh, in Solomon and all of the nation of Israel during his time, when they went to dedicate the temple minister, Al, Solomon prayed this prayer, uh, first Kings chapter eight, verses 28 to 30. And then we're going to, I'm going to read verses 46 to 48. Solomon prayed this prayer. For the nation um, as pertaining to the temple pertaining to the holy city jerusalem and pertaining to god responding or answering their prayers in different times when we are in trouble and i want you to hear what solomon said uh first kings chapter 8 28 to 30 and then verses 46 to 48 you know you old 7-Eleven coffee drink, you got your nerve, Minister Al, talking about what somebody else drinking, where they getting their coffee from. Hey, you go on the gas station getting your coffee. <laughs> and then he asks for extra crunch. <laughs> whatever. Whatever it is. He hey, whatever. It serves its purpose. Okay. Um, coming from 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 28. Uh, yet, and this is Solomon speaking to God. Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Jehovah my Elohim, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today. Now Solomon is referring to himself. That thy eyes may be open towards this house night and day, the temple, even towards the place which thou hast said, my name shall be there that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make towards this place. Oh, in this place as well as towards this place, Minister Al. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people, Yisrael. So not just for me, Minister Al, but for all your people, Yisrael. When they shall pray towards this place oh there are going to be times minister Al, where we will not be in the temple but we're gonna to have to pray towards the temple and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and when thou hearest forgive i'm gonna skip down to verse 46 minister Al, and if uh I'm going to have you go to 2 Chronicles as well, Minister Al. This is verse 46 to 48. It says, If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captive unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Also, Minister Al, this prayer wasn't just for the time in which Solomon lived. There would come a time where we would sin and God would remove us from the land, Minister. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried 
captive and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive saying we have sinned and have done perversely we have committed wickedness and so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies which led them away captive and pray unto thee towards their land minister Al, so not just in the temple not just towards the temple but towards the holy city of jerusalem as well which thou gavest unto their fathers the city which thou hast chosen and the house which i have built for thy name so solomon is asking for god to agree to this covenant minister Al, to where if we sin and we are removed from our land yet if wherever we are removed if we repent and do everything that the father's telling us to do and pray towards the holy city minister Al, he's asking god to hear our prayers and forgive us so when we talk about praying towards jerusalem or praying towards where the holy temple was this is biblical minister Al. it's not no witchcraft stuff that we didn't guide and we teaching no this is a covenant that solomon has prayed and guess what minister Al? the father accepted and so do you want to say something minister Al, while i pull up the, the verse where where el said he accepted this prayer i could say something uh you know what i had so much stuff on my mind that i wanted to to respond to but I think we have to put context, which we will do soon. We will put context to uh, these Bible verses. We know that people are going to say, well, the, the, the temple is destroyed. Well, just because the temple is destroyed, you don't rip the pages out the Bible and say, I no longer have to do this. Um, this was for Israel. Well, it is for Israel. Or we could in Hebrew say Yisrael. But you must understand what the Bible says about Yisrael and how the true believer plays a part. If you want your sins to be forgiven, if you want complete salvation, if you want him to hear your prayers. You just can't come into my house and say, man, I'm part of your family. Hey. First of all, you about to get up out of here <laughs> voluntarily or you're going to get thrown out. But in order to be a part of my family and take advantage of the benefits that I have from my hard work. And uh, to eat my food and, 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 and to, to enjoy my heat, we're going to have to have a relationship. And at, at this point of the game, Mr. Nate, unless you had the last same name as me, you know, I come and staying in here. And God wants us to join his family, whom he named. We can look at a whole bunch of different Bible verses. So I want us to understand that when we talk about one subject, you have to be careful because, Minister Nate, it will subsequently lead into other areas. You know, the Bible is, is, is stitched together by a number of different principles. And one thing will lead into another will lead into another. Now you have to deal with the Israel and Israel and Jew thing like that. but. Let's take one step at a time. If we know that he said that if his people, which are called by his name, will humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Well, if he's not hearing from heaven, you in trouble. Hey, you playing the game of dice. And soon, at some point, you're going to crap out. So go ahead, Mr. Nam, turn that back over to you so you can go ahead and read the Bible verse. Well, uh I have uh, 1 Kings 9, 1 to 3, and I, I want to read that just so that you can see the father's response to Solomon, everything he asked for. Uh, uh, chapter 9, verse 1 to 3. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Jehovah of the Lord and the king's house and all Solomon's desire, which he pleased to, to do, that the Jehovah appeared to Solomon the second time as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. And the Jehovah said unto him, 
I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever, Minister Al. And in conjunction to my name being there forever, Minister Al, my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. So he's saying everything you said, uh, Solomon, I accept. Now, when we get to Second Chronicles, uh, Minister Al, Read that last part again. He said, what's going to be there? Perpetually? Said, I have hollowed this house. He, I've hollowed it, Minister Al, which thou hast built to put my name there forever. That's one. Mm -hmm. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. So that means without ceasing, Minister Nate. Yes. That his eyes and heart is going to be there forever. Yes. Now, people will, will say, well, that was just for the Old Testament. Well, you don't understand what forever means. You don't understand what perpetual means. That doesn't change. And so there's something that's happening in Jerusalem. There's something that's happening spiritually in the East. Where he's commanding us to pray towards this place, to speak to him towards this place i mean if you want to say that the prayer is coming from heaven to from jerusalem you know like the internet you, i mean say what you want to say because we don't understand and this is the problem with what we call modern day religion because we don't understand when i say we i'm talking about the world they start to give their own context to it and thus we have different denominations because one group says one thing. So well, I don't agree with what Brother John say. I'm going to start my another group. I don't believe what the Catholics say. So I'm going to start with, you know, establish a Lutheran and so on and so forth. Because people are self-interpreting the Bible, Minister Nate, and it's not open for free and private interpretation. Well, one thing that I add to this, Minister, our people believe that simply because the Holy Spirit has fallen on the church as a whole, as opposed to just falling on the prophets and some of the anointed leaders in the Old Testament time. Now we don't need this. But I will remind you that when Solomon prayed this prayer, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Right? Uh, David made statements about God's dwelling place on earth, about God's house. One thing have I desired of the Jehovah, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Jehovah all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Jehovah. Oh, there's a beauty of him in his house, Minister Al, and to inquire in his tabernacle, in his house. Hold on. David was filled with the Spirit of God, Minister Al. David was filled with the Spirit of God, and he's still saying it is needful. There's one thing that is of utmost importance is that I must dwell in God's house. See, this is where the order of the Holy Spirit comes in. You believe because you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't need the system and structure that the Father has set up. And that's because religion has told you you didn't need the system and the structure. Christ was God in the flesh, Minister Al, and he still went to the temple. He still continued to go because there were commandments about doing certain things in his house. But you believe that because I have the spirit, I don't need the house. Do you know that the apostles continue to go to the temple, Minister Al, even after Christ died and resurrected until they were officially kicked out? Well, there's a reason, Minister Al, that they're going there and praying. You know, when John and Peter did this miracle in the third chapter of the book of Acts, they were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer. Oh, Solomon made a prayer about praying in the temple and God hearing our prayers. And the apostles, after the resurrection of Christ, were still keeping that commandment, Minister Al. 
And God did a miracle, Minister Al, for this man who was lame from his mother's womb. God did a miracle as they were keeping the commandment to go up and pray in his house. He did a miracle through Christ, through his name, his original Hebrew name. He did this miracle as they were keeping the covenant that Solomon made with the children of Israel and that God accepted. He said, my heart and my eyes will be there perpetually. Now, Minister Al, if God says my heart and my eyes are going to be there perpetually, why would you let someone convince you that God is no longer there? Why would you let someone convince you that that area where God says he desires to be forever, God is no longer there? When Christ comes back on earth, Minister Al, do you know he's coming back to where his temple was in Jerusalem? And he's setting up his house again in Jerusalem. And all nations will flow unto his house in Jerusalem, Minister Al. That's what the Bible says. All nations are going to come there. Isaiah 2, 2, two to three. 3. Minister, all nations. Guess what happens if you don't come up to his house? He says he's going to destroy you. You won't have no rain, Minister. He's going to punish you until you come or until That's you right. die. That's right. That's right. And so this idea that we don't need those things because that was the Old Testament. Well, the prophets were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they understood the importance of the temple. There was something about the Holy Spirit that was in them that God didn't do in them that he did in his temple. I I'm going to make that statement again. There were certain things about having the Holy Spirit. Oh, you can have the Holy Spirit, Minister Al. You can have it all you want to. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit like David was. And guess what David still said? Filled with the Holy Spirit, running over, his cup running over, Minister Al. One thing have I desired of the Jehovah, and that will I seek after. But you're now saying there's no need to seek after his house because we now have the Holy Spirit. That's man-made teachings that are extremely destructive. Solomon prayed this prayer, and in the prayer, Solomon anticipated us being removed from our Holy Land, Minister Al, and the need to pray not only towards the house. Oh, guess what? If the house is destroyed, pray towards the city, Minister Al. That was all anticipated by Solomon because he was that wise as a king. And God said, I've accepted your prayer, Solomon. I've accepted everything you said. Guess what? If my people, you, you know that if my people is related to God's response to accepting Solomon's prayer, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Guess what I'm going to do, Minister Al? I'm going to hear from heaven. I'm going to forgive their sin. And I'm going to heal their land. There's no need to heal the land if I haven't removed them from the sin and poisoning the land. So Solomon anticipated what would happen in the future, and God accepted his prayer, Minister Al. And that is why today, we pray towards Jerusalem. We pray towards where the Holy Temple was. Amen. Told our minister, Nate. Uh, that was great. That was great. We got a lot more. I don't know. Even today, Minister Nate, we're going to finish. We're going to try our best. Hope that you're enjoying uh, the class so far. We're on a new platform, so you guys may see us a little different um, on the Bethel Faith. Uh, blech. The Bayfell Facebook page. So, I want to thank y'all for our evangelist, Elder in Dominican. So, we are streaming from uh, the Dominican Republic uh, website. And guys can also see us on YouTube. I'm not finished yet. I don't think I'm giving you no closing statements, but you also can uh, view us on YouTube at Bayfell TV One, uh, or you can follow us on me on Twitter. I'm trying to get old man uh, over here to get on Twitter, but you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Minister Al. At restoration, uh, Mag. So, there, there's not a password. Okay, you're looking at something different. 
Uh, we're talking about. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. We have a few more, you know, slides we want to get out. And Mr. Nate, I think this is one that is great that I really want to, uh, I really want to tackle and address because at this point there are those that are still wishy washy on the subject. Uh, they're going to bring this up. And what are they going to say, Mr. Nate? I never pray as you suggested. In their mind, I'm his people. I don't know what name you're talking about, but I don't pray three times a day. Yet God answers my prayers. And you're going to hear that often. We should not take the father, Mr. Nate, his instructions or his standards for granted. He has standards. Now, you can keep on messing around and taking them 45-minute lunches when you know you need 30 minutes. You supposed to get 30 minutes? Oh, you know how we do, Minister Nate. You can keep going outside the realm of what is expected of you. And at some point, you're going to get called for it. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm just, I'm saying this to teach. My son moved into his, his, his place, Minister Nate, I, I don't know, November or something last year. And last Sunday, I believe it was last Sunday, he called me. He was like, Dad, don't be telling my business. But last Sunday, he called me. And he say, uh, Pops, you know, I need some help, man. My car got towed. And I went over there and picked him up, to, you know, take him to the car place. I mean, place to tow come to get his car. And he got in the car. He's like, man, they tripping. I've been over here since November and they ain't messed with my car. Dude, did you have a sticker on there like you're supposed to? No, but they haven't messed with me in seven, eight months. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter. At some point, they're going to get you. Anybody that's parked in this lot overnight that don't have a sticker is going to get told. Now, it was 4th of July weekend, so they said they really going to make their money. But you got to go and you have to follow the instructions and the standards. Sure, most people will tell you that it doesn't take all of, of, of that. Don't take all that, minister. I don't take all that for you to pray, for you to have a relationship with God. It is true that you can pray in any situation that causes you to talk to the Father. Listen, if my car is an accident and I flipped upside down, common sense should tell you, and people are going to say that, well, we're, I mean, what if I didn't have no lid? I mean, <laughs> people say all type of stuff. But if you're in the car, if you running from a lion, I mean, I don't know why you would be running from a lion or a dog or when I go into interviews, I'm praying, walking into the interview. Yeah, I prayed earlier. But I'm praying, I'm speaking confidence in myself. So there are sometimes it's going to cause for us to pray without kneeling. But listen, that's outside the realm of your morning, noon, and evening prayers. However, Daniel and others gave us a model for how to be more effective in reaching God and the things that we should include in our prayers. Certain things you should say. Now, I'm going to say this again, Minister Nate. I know I'm Minister, Al, Minister Al full of examples. Let me say this. We have to know the right words to say. Oh, you could have had that man that you wanted if you would have just, you had everything. When you open your mouth, baby, it was over. <laughs> so you got to have the right words to say. Um, recently, well, at, 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 there was a time where I had an interview and I, I was working with an agency, a headhunter. And so he called me, he said, um, listen, you know, I got your resume. There are some things that I just want to fix up. I want to talk to you. He said, I know exactly what the employer wants. I know what they're looking for. I know you got the background, but the language, I want to make sure that we emphasize in the resume on some things that they're really looking for. And so I sat down with him for about an hour, hour and a half. And we going through this stuff. I'm like, man, I, you know, that TD stuff just 
gets under my skin. And I'm going through the changes. I'm making the changes. He's telling me about he's he's going through, you know, some of the things they're asking, they're looking for. And as he's asking me and I'm communicating those things to him, he's OK, write it down just like that. Type that in there. And so we went through this whole process because, again, he knew what the employer was looking for. And so I changed up the resume, didn't want to do it. Here's the funny thing. Two or three months prior to that, he called me and he asked me to do the same thing. And I kind of blew him up. I'm like, hey, man, my resume is tight. I don't, you know, I, I didn't tell him that, but I didn't send him the updated resume. We, you know, I never heard back from him. But then two months later, after I talked to him and I did what he told me to do, and he took what I did, he cleaned it up a little bit, formatted it, submitted it, and I ended up getting the job. Because he knew, because he was in the mind of the hiring manager, the CIO. He knew what he was looking for. He just needed for me to communicate it on paper. So communication is extremely important, whether it's verbal or whether it's written. Okay, uh, let me go to Howard Daniel. Howard Daniel and others gave us a model of how to be more effective in reaching God and the things that we should include in our prayers. Daniel, the sixth chapter said that Daniel always prayed to God three times every day. Now, this is Daniel, Minister Nate. This is the prophet Daniel. Who else did we see this from? David. Three times every day, he bowed down on his knees to pray and praise God. When we see righteous men of the Bible, Minister Nate, repeating constant standards, it's not by coincidence. Now, what would make you think that Daniel just ran, randomly picked three out of all the times that you can pray? If I see two righteous men praying towards the east three times, a day. There's something to that. Now, you can be walking down the street and you see one person flying past you in the opposite direction. Another one flying past you in the opposite direction. The third one flying past you in the opposite direction. Hey, Mr. Nate, you some type of new food if you don't turn around and start running. Because something is going on when I see three people flying past me. <laughs> So when we see people praying three times, facing the east, oh, I'll get to you in the New Testament in a minute now. I know some folks say, keep, there's still some non-believers out there, Minister Nate. But we see a constant standard. These are men and women who have been divinely inspired through the Holy Spirit. Daniel was a prophet, and in the book of Amos, the third chapter, verse 7, it said that surely the Lord God will do nothing but revealeth his secret until his servants, the prophets. Hey, that's all I need to see. Minister Nate, if a prophet is doing it, I'm doing it. If righteous men of the Bible are doing it, there's something to it. There's a pattern. Go ahead, Minister Nate. Let, let me add this to it, Minister Al. These weren't just normal righteous men, Minister Al. These were prophets. Minister Al, and the prophets had a, a direct line to the Father. Right? Amos 3 and 7, we read it all the time. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret. I ain't put an S on there, Dr. Tate, to his servants, the prophets. So if the prophets have a direct line to the Father, to get the mysteries, the secrets, the secret first, shouldn't you then look at some of the things that they're revealing unto you that you didn't know that you should be doing? Well, both of both Daniel and David were prophets, and they're showing you that you pray three times a day towards to the Father. Minister, well, well, where did Moses? 
pray three times a day. Where did Abraham pray? See, the Bible says by two or three witnesses, let every matter be established. You got two witnesses, two righteous and holy witnesses. You saying I need 75 witnesses. Hey, right. Hey, Mr. Nate, the fact that we see these two righteous witnesses tells me that they did it right prior to. Elder Every say, close the book, Minister Al. Close it. It's over. Uh, I forgot where. Okay. Oh, let's go to this uh, next part, Mr. Nate. The Apostle Peter was also someone who prayed three times per day. Now, listen. Peter had the keys, Minister Nate. He had the keys of the kingdom. And he prayed three times a day. So for, for, for folks that just say, well, Minister Al, what you're giving me is Old Testament stuff. If the blind lead the blind, everybody falling in a ditch. Just because folks within Christianity and other religious circles aren't teaching this, well, my pastor deep. Well, he ain't that deep. He said, I will hide my wisdom. I will hide my word from the wise and prudent, and I will deliver them unto babes. You know, the children of Israel, the true children of Israel is going to set the standard. And that standard that we're setting wasn't set by us. It was set by our fathers. When he says that I will reveal the secret things unto you. And he said that the children of Israel is going to bless the entire world. We need to we need to teach that. If you are to be blessed. And you didn't talk to nobody that was of the true house of Israel. You're not blessed. You are deceived. So we see that the apostle Peter. He prayed, Minister Nate, three times a day. In Acts, the second chapter, verse 15, he prayed with the church at the third hour of the day. Now, why did the Bible emphasize on the third hour of the day? Because there are other times of the day he's going to pray. In Acts, the third chapter, verse 1, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. The ninth hour. So if he went up two times, I know he went up three. The Bible doesn't have to be redundant. Well, how come it don't say it here? And in Acts, the 10th chapter, verse 9, Peter went up to the housetop to pray at the sixth hour of the day at noon. So we see it, Minister Nate. We see it throughout the Bible. We see it in the Old Testament. And, and just for you, for folks that, that, that yell Old Testament, Old Testament, we don't have to do that. Praise God. Peter did it. New Testament. Keys to the kingdom. Now, I'm not going to go back and count how many years there were between Peter and Daniel. Or Peter and David. But there were many years. And yet, Minister Nate, we still see Peter doing. Let me say this about uh, uh, David, and then, and then I'm gonna, uh, uh, we're going to read a couple of Bible verses. What do we know about David, Minister Nate? I thought I put it in here. Maybe I didn't. What do we, I mean, there's something that should be said, Minister Nate, about David that's important. Um, I'm just reading real quick. Well, never mind. Let me read the first Bible verse, Minister Nate, and then we'll talk about David. Is David more important than Peter? I like Peter because Peter is the New Testament area, um, in the New Testament era, and it takes away. It takes away the argument that that was some old time stuff. So, so I like Peter, but I love David. And the reason I love David, let's go ahead and read this Bible verse, Minister Nate. In the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, verse 24. It says, hold on, I got too many. It says, David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they shall have one shepherd and they also and they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statues and do them. I'm going to read it one more time. And somebody should have caught it. David, my servant, 
shall be king over them. Who is them? <laughs> the people of God. And they shall all have one shepherd. So who's going to be the one shepherd? David. Oh, David's going to rule forever. But he's going to be the one shepherd. But it's something important about David. They, who is the they? The people of God. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. Oh, we don't have no more judgments. We don't have to keep the statutes. We don't have to D.O. them. There's nothing that we D.O. have to do to get to the kingdom. Well, David, who's going to rule forever, the Bible says that he's going to be over us and we're going to do the judgments and the statutes. Now, if David is to rule over us forever, I'll tell you this, and I'll tell you this with a straight face. I'm listening to somebody been dead over, what, 5,000 years, however many long years, Mr. Nate, before I li listen to your living preacher telling me that I don't have to pray. David's going to rule over us forever. So he knows the desires. He knows the will of God. So why would you take your preacher's word for it? Or your evangelist's word for it? That it don't take all that. And David said it does. David did it. Hey, Mr. Nate, it's clear to me <laughs> that David has the closest relationship. I mean, I'm not saying he said Abraham was his friend. He had a lot of great relationships. But for you to rule over us forever, I'm taking David's word and I'm doing what David did. Well, before you read that last verse, Minister, let me toss this in. It's coming from Acts, the 13th chapter. Uh oh. OK, they've temporarily restricted me from posting. OK, I just tried to post the Bible verse, so I'll just read it. It won't. OK. Yep, go ahead. Acts 13, 22. Okay. Uh, I don't know what happened. Um, so Acts 13, 22, it says, and when he had removed him, referring to Saul, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave their testimony. And said, now this is God's testimony. I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Oh, he was convinced, Minister Isle. He was convinced that David was going to fulfill all his will. Well, Minister Nate, David sinned. So did you. So did I. And guess what David did, Minister Isle? He repented. And he never did those things again. But he had a testimony from the creator of the universe that David was a man after his own heart. Whatever was God's will, David sought it out so that he might do it. Which shall fulfill, that's a, that's a promise, minister of the future. Which shall fulfill all, minister of not 50%, not 75%. This is not a testimony that he did write a little bit of his life. He shall fulfill all my, everything that I've set David aside to do, Minister Al, he's going to do it. He's going to fulfill my will. Him serving me is not connected to Samuel being alive, Minister Al. Him serving me is not connected to the riches and all these other he will fulfill all of my will, minister. This is God's testimony for King David. And so if we see David praying morning, noon, and evening, minister, you can be assured that that was the will of the father, minister. David's going to be our king. I'm sorry, our shepherd. In the future, Minister Al, you know who's going to set him as a shepherd? Christ. You say, well, what's Christ going to be? You looking too much into it. 
mean, it's out. Christ was here on earth, and the Bible said he was an apostle. And guess what he had under him, Minister Al? Other apostles and other leaders. You've convinced yourself, and this religion is telling you that. This is your own mind telling you that because Christ is an apostle, nobody else can be an apostle. Because Christ is the chief shepherd, we can't have no other shepherds. Well, that's your own mind telling you that because that's not what the scripture says. Well, because Christ is the high priest, we can't have no other priest. Well, there's going to be a time where we will have priests again. We don't have them right now. See, but you have to open up your Bible. The Bible says line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Stop getting a few Bible verses and leaving out other Bible verses and creating doctrine. Because it's very important for us to know the importance of prayer, Minister. Prayer is important. It's essential to you overcoming everything that's against you, Minister. Al. You got it. I think, uh, yeah, I think that you, Minister Nate was uh, giving me too many Bible verses. And Facebook, <laughs> yeah, I think Facebook blocked us from messaging for 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 a little bit here. So I'm going to have to post those Bible verses uh, through our YouTube channel. All right. So let's go back and, um, yep. Yeah. Oh, I did too. All right, let's go back. We have one more Bible verse, Romans 8, chapter verse 26. Mr. Nate, and this is very important. Let's go back and look at the, the title of this slide. I never pray as you suggested. Mr. Nate, I want to talk about this. Yet God answers my prayers. Um, in the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, verse 26, and we, I kind of briefly touched on it uh, when I started the class today. Look at what Romans, the eighth chapter, verse 26 says. Uh, Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. So the spirit is doing something to help us for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. So we don't know what we should pray for. But there are some things that are not right in our lives that are blocking our prayers. We don't know that they're blocking our prayers. I'm going to go back again to Revelation 12, chapter verse nine. These are some of the things, some of the tricks and techniques, whatever that Satan uses to deceive the entire world. Make them think they saved. Make them think that God is hearing their prayers. Make them think that they're okay. And if you think you're okay, then you're not going to do nothing. Oh, if you think your body banging, I'm not going to the, look at this body. I'm not going to the jump. <laughs> so when you think a certain way, it's going to cause you not to really engage and seek salvation because you don't know to seek salvation. The pastor told you you're right. The system told you you're right. The Western world is telling you that you're okay. Everything is telling you that you're okay because you have not sought after salvation. And you're not going to seek after salvation because who knows to seek after salvation? People say, well, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he died for my sins. I've accepted him as my Lord and personal Savior. And basically, that's all I have to do. Easy peasy. But that's not the truth. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Sometimes we sin it knowingly. Sometimes we sin in and not knowing we sin in. Well, the Bible says he hears not a sinner's prayer. But the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So the spirit is interceding for our behalf or on our behalf because, Minister Nate, we haven't heard the truth. There are some things that are not right in our lives. We got envy. And we got certain things in our heart that we're working on. You know, I pray all the time. I pray when I when I came into the faith and I tell this testimony all the time. And my prayer is sincere. So don't say, well, yeah, Minister Al, everybody do that. I said, God, look at my heart. 
Oh, I know I ran the streets until four in the morning on the Sabbath. <laughs> Come on, God, look at my heart. I want to do right. And it may sound crazy to people, Minister Nate. It may sound like that's a cop out. But I was telling God, I'm too weak. Man, I've been in this world too long, having fun for too many years. Look at my heart. Yeah, you know. He can see in the depthness of your heart. People can say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Uh, uh, I'm a man of God. I'm preaching. I'm here to help you, sister. God is the one who sees in the depthness of our hearts. And so because we don't know how to pray, Minister Nate, because there are things that are off in our life. Hey, kudos. You know why the, the spirit has to intercede? Because we all were born into sin. Probably all of us on here, or most of us, knew nothing about the seventh day Sabbath. Knew nothing about the dietary law because your mama did it, or your grandmama did it, or your daddy did it. And then you grew up at 23, 24 years old, you're still doing the things that you were taught to do. So God is going to intercede to let us know that he's still alive, that he's still working, that he's still able. But we have this thing that's called grace. And some people have a 30 year grace. Some people have 80 year grace. Some people have a 100 year grace. Now, if you got a 100 year grace, don't think that God was with you. Don't think that everything is right in your life because of that grace period. It's according to him, Minister Nate, it's according to what he wanted to do. This is how Satan deceives us. If you are not doing what the Bible commands us to do, I don't care if you live to be a hundred and become a millionaire. I can take you into the Bible and show you that there were wealthy people in the Bible that lived long. I think it was Job, Minister Nate, who talked about them. Don't look at what the physical eye can see. Look at the spiritual eye. What does the word of God say? So, Minister Nate, the Holy Spirit intercedes on us. But here's the deal. When the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and all that, right? That is God's will. He desires us to be perfect. Now, when I say perfect, I don't mean that, you know, I mean, <laughs> if you step on a nail, step on a tag, and you got let something come out your mouth. See, I told you, brother, you wasn't perfect. That's not what the Bible's telling you. Hey, repent. Put on some shoes next time. But the intercessor will stop interceding. Look at the act of interceding, says the petition. Or entry in favor of another. It's a petition. Now, I watch cop shows sometimes. I watch the first 48, whatever. And, you know, when, when the lawyer goes before the judge and petitions a retrial or petitions the, the courts to lower your bail. You know what the judge can say? I accept your petition. Or the judge will say, I reject your petition. Now I heard something on Sirius XM. I have no clue who Young Thug, is a Young Thug? Young Thug, I think it is. Uh, some of you little young folks that's all can tell me. I think it was him who was locked up for some gangster types. So I don't know, but I was just listening to Sirius XM and his lawyer went and petitioned the court to let him out on bail. You know what the judge said? Absolutely not. He's a danger to society. Yeah, Y'all better correct me if I'm saying the wrong, have me getting sued for defamation of character saying the wrong person. But the judge said absolutely not. So this is what can happen with your petition. God said, you know what? I have a requirement. I need you to meet my requirement. And if you are not meeting God's requirement, then he's not pleased. So at some point, he's not going to hear your petition. He's not going to hear your prayer. So don't let these, these pastors preach. We got the intercessor. Oh, the intercessor is great. Because there was a time where I didn't know. Some of you are older, were older than me. 
when you heard the truth. And God spared you all that time. You have prayed. You weren't praying three times a day. But you prayed. But thank God. As I like to say, for, for looking through time and looking through space and looking past your faults and looking past your unsaved parents and unsaved friends. And your prayers got through because of the intercessor. Now that you are in the truth, the intercessor doesn't have to intercede on my behalf because I know how to pray. Didn't this Bible verse just say, Minister Nate, that he helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray? Learn how to pray. You want to get closer to God. You want to get more of your prayers answered. Every time you speak, it's coming to pass. Oh, I love the intercessor. Minister Al got a whole lot of things in his life that he got to fix. So I thank Yah, even being in the faith for the intercessor. But I want to become perfect. It is my greatest desire, more than anything else, to be perfect, Minister Nate, so I can communicate directly with the Father. Well, Minister Al, you know, I want to put this Bible verse. I can't put it in the chat because you didn't get see if they unblocked you. You didn't no, nah, you didn't did some minister. Okay, just them, just put it in through YouTube then. That's them blocked us. I don't they know, blocked on YouTube. I don't know what you've been over there doing. No, nah, they blocked us on Facebook. Okay. Now they ain't blocked us. You the one that's giving all them long verses. I was trying to copy and paste. <laughs> okay, I put it in through uh uh, YouTube. Uh, this is coming from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14 verse 15. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with understanding. Listen, Minister Al. The Spirit is interceding on your behalf because you don't know how to pray. Now there's no reason, Minister Al, that you should stay in a position where you don't know how to pray. Why? There's too many examples in the Bible of righteous men and righteous women praying that you should use to learn how to speak to the Father. What should I ask the Father? How should I address the Father? Minister, the standard is all over from the Old Testament all the way to the New Testament of how we should communicate with the Father. So why is 40 years going by and the spirit is still correcting you because you calling God by English name? 40 years then went by, Minister Al, and you haven't got the revelation that God doesn't have an English name. Yeah, the, the, the spirit is going to intercede on your behalf because at the time you're ignorant. But guess what the spirit is telling you? Pray with the spirit. And if this, if he's saying pray in the spirit, then you should always have truth connected to that minister. Al. That's what the father is desiring for people to worship him in spirit and in truth. But he says, pray with understanding. You got to understand what you can and can't say to God. You have to understand how do I address him? The apostles ask minister Al, for themselves, but you can benefit from the question that they ask. Teach us how to pray. Minister Al, so the Bible says, I believe in Hebrews 7 and 25, that Christ ever lives, Minister Al, to make intercession on your behalf. Oh, you thought that your prayers was going directly to the Father. Oh, your tone might be off, Minister Al. You think that tone is going to come up to God? No, it's going to be corrected before it gets there. You think the words that you use, you might be using profanity in your prayer. You might be saying anything. You might be talking crazy because you're angry. You think that's going to get up to him, Minister Al? You think you calling God by a blasphemous name? You think that's going to make it up to the Father? No, that's why Christ is interceding on your behalf. I understand what you're going through. Let me say this. Let me correct this. 
hey, but, but Minister Al, guess what? You better get right. Because I'm not going to always be here correcting your prayers. Because we're commanded, Minister Al, to pray and pray with understanding. First Corinthians, Minister Al, 14 and 15. Pray in the spirit, Minister Al, and pray with understanding also. Oh, he says, if you're going to sing in the spirit, good. I'm glad you're singing in the spirit, Minister Al. Sing with understanding also. Well, the song sound good. I don't know what it means, but it sound good. You, well, you better know what it means. You singing a song to the Father. You better hope that the song isn't blaspheming. You better hope that your prayer isn't blaspheming. So it's, it's important, Minister Al, for you to learn the standards of communicating with the Father, what he's expecting, what you can ask, what you shouldn't ask. Minister Al, get an understanding of it. Oh, the Bible says if any man lack wisdom, let him ask the I don't know how to pray. God, teach me how to pray. You shouldn't stay in the same state, Minister Al. You shouldn't be praying the same way today that you were praying 10 years ago. You should always be developing and becoming better at doing things for heaven's sake, especially when you're talking about communicating with the Father, because this is our access that we have, Minister Al, to get the hardest things answered on earth. Well, you have a learning disability. You know that you can get over, you can overcome that learning disability, Minister Al, through your prayer? Through your prayer and through your righteous living? The Father will help you overcome. But you're going to have to understand that you can't stay where you are. You have to develop and become better in your prayer. You should have a better understanding of the way to talk to the Father now than you had 10 years ago, than you had five years ago, than you had two years ago. Hey, man. Thank you, Minister Nate. You know what? I, I, I don't know. We talk too much. I got five slides left, but we're going to pick up <laughs> next week. Uh, we kind of exceeded our time, um, but we hope that uh, the information, which was a continuation from last week, um, encouraged you, um, enlightened you, gave you a measuring stick, letting you know where you stand um, between the father and his truth. Um, he wants that relationship with us. And he desires of us to do it his way. There's no other way we can do it. God is holy. He's holy in all his ways. And so we have to do it the holy way. We have to do it the righteous way. And so we thank him for giving us his word and opening up our understanding and, and reinforcing to us. There are some things that we know, but it's good to hear it and, and have those things reinforced um, to us. Because uh, sometimes, Mr. Nate, you know, we lose track. We talk about so many different things. We have so many things going on in our lives. It's our responsibility, and this is why the Bible commands us to meditate on this word day and night. It's, it's our responsibility to hold on to these things and, and remember them so that we may do them because things may not always go well with us because we forgot, because we forgot how to pray. And this is extremely important, Mr. Nate, so I guess we will continue on um, going into faith and some other things that we need for prayer and how to exercise those things. Isn't it great to be told and, and to be given some secrets of how to move to the front of the line? How to make sure that God is looking Oh, what? I, hold on, I hear, I see. Hey, move everybody else out the way. I deal with the intercessor. Let me deal with my people, which are called by my name. Let me get to them right away. Amen. So we thank God again for his word. We hope you enjoyed our new little platform. You know, I know I'm, was I looking too confused today? Um, but no, we thank y'all. We thank y'all for the incident ministry that happened a few weeks ago because it kind of allowed us to, you know, go to this platform. Some things we're still trying to figure out, but we thank God that we're able to stream here on, uh, our Facebook page uh, on Dominican Republic and uh, here at Bethel Temple and College, as well as on uh, Twitter and uh, YouTube. We hope to uh, stream on Instagram soon, as well as our, our website, get back to doing that. So um, 
these things cost and and so we don't we're not going to the upper echelon of the platform yet so there are some some cool things that we eventually would want to do uh, we want to ask you to remember your donations and go to tv uh, dot net uh, those people that are visiting us for the first time we want to Thank you for being here with us. I know there's a lot of things that we talked about that you may have never heard, but we encourage you to reach out to us on our Facebook page, um, Bethel Temple and College. Uh, just go to Facebook and hit rest, hashtag Restoration Gospel. Uh, we encourage you to go to our website. You should see that on the screen now. Fancy Tools, Minister Nate. And uh, go to our website. We have a lot of frequently asked questions. We have a lot of uh, great information there that can kind of bring you up to speed on what we believe and again we don't take anything personal if there's some things that is not clear and you still want to talk to myself or minister nate we ask that you reach out to us on one of those platforms so uh thank you all for for being here uh i hope i did everything right but uh we're gonna get better next week and we'll continue to get better so uh anything else minister nate on prayer we're gonna continue i guess next week okay all right so we want to thank you all. I um, think that's it. We want, to, we want to give you back your time. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sabbath on behalf of Bayfell Temple and College of Minister Nate. Minister Al, we want to depart you as we greeted you by saying Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.